Hello there everybody, I'm Daryl Griffiths. Welcome to my first video review of 2017. I hope you've all been very well and your Christmas breaks were great and a very happy new year to you all. I hope you didn't party too hard on New Year's Eve. The first film of this year that I'm going to tackle for you guys is the big screen adaptation of Assassin's Creed. Now if you're not familiar with the material, it is a, a lucrative game franchise that has brought much money to Ubisoft and its premise taps into the memories of our ancestors. So the likes of Ezio and Altair will be familiar to many of you uh, and it's seen through the protagonist Desmond Miles. Now the film has made a few tweaks uh, but doesn't hurt it too much in the grand scheme of things but can Assassin's Creed break this pesky video game curse? Let's tap into the narrative. Now, Michael Fassbender plays a new character in the form of Callum Lynch. We begin in 1986 and we get a feeling of a very awkward and fractured relationship with his mom and dad. And we get a sort of an origin story into his character. And then we're transported 30 years ahead and he's on the brink of death basically he's about to be charged with the death penalty uh for the killing of a pimp so he's a very aggressive intense being and Sophia Rykin played by Marion Cotillard along with her father Alan Rykin who is the CEO of the Animus Project and they believe that that religion and consumerism hasn't helped in trying to understand why men are so violent and they believe that with this Animus project, they can tap into the memories of Callum's ancestors, particularly the Spanish Inquisition era. So we're looking at 1492 here and just rediscover the Apple of Eden, uh, which is the Hitchcockian MacGuffin of the film, if you like. And it transports us and balances between the two worlds like the games. And it provides some thrilling chase sequences as you would imagine but are Sophia and Alan Rykin's intentions honourable or is there a sinister undertone to their plans so Assassin's Creed let's start with the positives I think the action sequences are very well staged and well paced uh, I think if there is one big issue with that with those uh, for how well they're presented is the aesthetic I think there's such a hazy tinge to it that when even in mid shot or close up I think that the film suffers from being very tough to decipher the actions of certain characters and I, I mean I saw it in 2D with my dad who's a very big fan of the games as well but I know that there is the 3D conversion I don't personally believe it would aid anybody who was intending to watch it uh, in terms of the action sequences I think it would really hurt your viewing in my opinion um, but for the most part, they're very well presented. I think the world building and the narrative structure, I think it taps into a lot of the material that the games uh, presented. And I think it's very faithful in that sense. But I think it suffers from something similar that Warcraft had, uh, the Duncan Jones interpretation last year. I think trying to cram so much mythology into a two hour running time is very difficult. And I think with the exposition... And there is a lot of exposition in its present day within the film. And I think with the less entries of the games, it did suffer somewhat. And I think the film does have a tendency to get very bogged down with trying to display and try and make the audience, especially for non-gamers, understand what's going on. Um, but I think it's very faithful. I think the action sequences and the synchronicity between the two worlds as Fazbender's actions mirror the renaissance spanish inquisition era even uh they're very effective and very well edited in that regard um i think fazbender's very effective as callum lynch he brings that steely glare and intensity and he's always a reliable on-screen presence fazbender um so his interactions with the likes of jeremy irons alan Rykin, and marion cotillard sophia Rykin are effective when they do end up on screen together i think cotillard sophia she does, she's basically the woman who has to pull out the exposition out of the film, out of the script, which can be quite flimsy at times. Um, and I think with the third act particularly, I think because it's very prolonged, the third act. And I think the character motivations are very muddled because it's because of the exposition. You don't quite know why she's done what she's done. 
in the final act, which I won't spoil for anybody. Um, but it did make it hard to swallow as an audience. Um, but I think Jeremy Irons, he brings a lot of intensity as well. And he mirrors Fassbender very well. And he's a very peculiar character. In And I think the intentions of his character are very representative of the modern day. We're trying to understand why people are so violent and so hateful in a very fractured world. And I think it does tap into that very neatly uh, within the script and within this narrative structure. And there's great support with the likes of Charlotte Rampling, Brendan Gleeson, who Fazbender's alongside in Trespass Against Us, uh, the upcoming film that's out in March. I did have, I did get to see it at London Film Festival last year, and it is a great film. I'll undoubtedly provide a video review later down the line for that one. And there's Michael K. Williams, who you may know very well from Boardwalk Empire. Uh, he plays Baptiste, another... Uh, ancestor character uh, similar to Callum Lynch and he has a very good camaraderie with him as well but I think as a, a cohesive whole Assassin's Creed does have a lot of problems um, which are undoubtedly because it's trying to do so much in such a, a tight running time and try not to drag it out any further like maybe Warcraft did with the mythology and the world building but I think this is the first video game film that you can really see the potential and what it could tap into down the line. And I really hope it gets a chance. I mean, in comparison, I mean, Resident Evil's still going on. I think we're on like five or six films of that. And considering the quality of those, if that can have such a prolonged time on screen, I think Assassin's Creed does deserve another chance to really explore this world because it is a great premise as a big screen franchise. And... And there's so much material within the games that it can really tap into. And I hope it gets a chance because it's such a great cast at its core. Kazell equips himself very well in terms of its direction. Again, it suffers from very similar issues in terms of narratively and aesthetically. It could really tidy things up. I think the hazy tinge that it does get bogged down with does make it difficult at times. But Assassin's Creed is a competently directed and very well paced action film when it really gets going it's just a shame that i think the script could have needed a bit more polish in, in terms of streamlining its exposition um but is it worth a watch i would say so and i think considering the reviews and they've been quite harsh i'm not gonna lie there's been a lot of one and two star reviews knocking around i really don't believe it's the disaster many claim but amazing it isn't but it is a solid video game film and it's very rare that i've said that so that is a wrap on my review of assassin's creed i hope you've enjoyed it you can subscribe to my youtube channel below which would be mean a great deal uh, of course my reviews are on filmoria front row reviews and we mount movies on weekends now so be sure to like our facebook pages and follow our twitter pages as well and keep up to date with those uh, my next video review i'm very tempted although i've done a written one to do one of la la land which is out next thursday the 12th of january here in the uk because i'm really eager to see it again and i think after that second screening i will provide a video review for you guys to see if it actually holds up on a second viewing uh, but that should be my next one uh, but for now i've been daryl griffiths i hope you all take care and i hope you've enjoyed this video review and i'll speak to you soon thank you very much guys see you later